Why? Because Islam has been doing this for nearly 14 centuries. Ibn Asak, page 675. Abu Afak was one of Banu Amr bin Auf of the Banu Ubaidah clan. He showed his disaffection when the apostle killed Al-Harith bin Suwayd bin Samit and said, Long have I lived, but never have I seen an assembly or collection of people more faithful to their undertaking and their allies when called upon than the sons of Kayla when they assembled, men who overthrew mountains and never submitted. Kayla was the ancestor of some of the tribes in the area of Medina. These tribes would unite when someone tried to conquer them. A rider, this is Muhammad, who came to them, split them in two, saying, permitted, forbidden, of all sorts of things. Had you believed in glory or kingship, you would have followed Tuba. Now this is actually an epic burn. Abu Afak says that the sons of Kayla were totally reliable and loyal to each other and to their allies, and as such, no one could conquer them. But some random rider, namely Muhammad, comes along and starts yelling halal and haram, and he causes division and starts ordering them to kill each other. Abu Afak says, had you believed in glory or kingship, you would have followed Tuba. Tuba was the king of Yemen who had tried to conquer Medina in the fourth century. The tribes united and were able to resist the attack. Abu Afak's point is that it would be one thing to submit to a powerful king and to join his kingdom. But to submit to some guy on a horse who starts babbling about what's permitted and forbidden and then orders you to start killing each other, that's just insane. And what happened? The apostle said, Who will deal with this rascal for me? Whereupon Salam bin Umer, brother of Banu Amr bin Auf, one of the weepers, went forth and killed him. He killed Abu Afak, who, by the way, was more than a hundred years old. Notice, these guys were related. Abu Afak complained that Muhammad was causing the tribes around Medina to start slaughtering each other, and Muhammad's response was to order them to slaughter each other. Sound familiar, Nigeria? So as you can see, um, David Wood says that, uh, talks about the killing of Abu this the life of Muhammad, a translation of Ibn Isaac Sirak Rasulullah by Alfred Gill. So again, I already refuted this story back in 2016, um, but I'll just, but I, I, I wasn't responding to um, David Wood, but now I'll, I'll be responding to this specific argument. First of all, um, in Islam, everything needs to have a, a source or chain of transmission. The only book that doesn't need a chain of transmission is the Quran, because we know the Quran came from, or we Muslims believe that the Quran was revealed by God. So the Quran is the only book that doesn't have any kind of sort, any kind of chain of transmission, or any kind of it's not for it, because we know that it was revealed uh, to Israel, to the proper moment, to humanity. So that's the chain of transmission for the Quran. For every hadith, every story found in biography books, hadith, um, you know, uh, uh, Islamic jurisprudence, everything needs a proper source or a chain of transmission. And this story doesn't have the, the story of killing Abu Afaq doesn't have a story in it. So it's found on Ibn Asak page 675, like David would say. So I'll just, I'll, I'll look for a source for that story. Uh, let's see here. Oops. All right. So, so as you can see, uh, as you can see from the graphic, and as you can see here, uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if people can see that or or not. It just the story just starts. It says Sa Salim bin Umair's expedition to kill Abu Afaq, and then it just goes into it. It says Abu Afaq was one of Bana Amr. Of, of the Banu Hudeya clan. He showed his dissatisfaction when the apostle killed El Harth bin Suwayd bin Salat, etc., etc., etc. So basically, the story um, doesn't have any kind of source or any kind of isnad or any kind of 
source for the story. And so this, the story is automatically invalid or it's false because there's no source for it. If there's no source for a story, then we can reject it because um, uh, we can reject it because we know that it, it comes from unreliable people, unreliable narrators. So uh, this whole thought story is false because there's no source for it or there, there's no it's not or there's no chain of transmission or there's no source for it so we Muslims can so we can reject the story right so any any honest person can reject any honest non-Muslim can reject it because uh, there's no source for the story uh, you know so stay tuned so that's all I wanted to say about that stay tuned a lot more videos are up ahead uh, I was trying to keep this video as short as possible thanks